Here we go, guys. Let's see what it looks like. Look at that. It's actually really pretty. So this is a 75 amp hour cell. So if we get four of them, we'll have 75 amp hours at 12.8 volts. Look at all of these boxes just to ship this one little battery. So these cells are encased in aluminum. And look at this, you guys, look at positive and negative. It's on the terminal stud. How interesting is that? So my followers do not like it, but we are going to build a pack with electrical tape. And for most packs, we would do positive, negative, positive, negative. But because these bus bars go diagonally, we need to do positive, 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 and then negative on this side. Oh, that's weird. It doesn't line up that well. But if I bend the bus bars a little bit, then the cells match up. So we're going to have to do that. Do you see how uneven it is? I can't push them together. All right, it's going to look bad, but I'm just going to put it together. I don't like these bus bars. That's not cool. Also, these bus bars are kind of tiny compared to our big fat copper ones. I mean, compare it to this. This is this can push a lot of current. That looks horrible, guys. Ugh. All right, here we go. If I push it afterwards, then I can tape it. All right, we did it, guys. And now I added a balance cable so we can check the cell voltages. They're only off by six millivolts. That's perfect. That's totally good. Something I've noticed that the, the volumetric density is different than my Sino polys. Look at the form factor. These are really tiny for being 75 amp hours. I mean, if you think about my 100 amp hours, they're like pretty hefty cells. These are really tiny. But that's kind of a downside because look how tiny these terminal studs are. I prefer bigger terminals. Like imagine putting a huge zero gauge wire on this. There's no way. And look at the difference. Over here we have Sino Poly 40 amp hour cells and eight of them will create 80 amp hours at 12 volts. This thing is 75 amp hours at 12 volts and look how small it is. These cases are really nice though. I love these bus bars. You can put hose clamps. It's a very sturdy case, but it comes at a cost. This one uses an aluminum case and it can dissipate heat more effectively. So yeah, pros and cons to each case material, but it's crazy to see how small this thing is. All right, guys, check it out. We have it within one millivolt or two millivolts of each other. And it took only one hour. So now we're going to add a BMS and hook up this inverter and do a capacity test. And the reason that we do a capacity test is that it will tell us how well these cells are matched and their overall health. So if one of the cells has lower capacity than the other ones, we will see it on the test because the capacity of all of these cells is determined by the lowest capacity cell. So if all of them are good, then the pack as a whole will work really well in our capacity test. If one of them is bad, then our capacity test will have bad results. So this is the typical Will Prowse method of testing capacity. We have the inverter, we have a Hall Effect capacity monitor, we have a BMS, we also have a cell monitor so we can watch the voltage of the cells when the BMS cuts it off. So right now we're charged up to 14.2 volts. And because we're using lithium iron phosphate and these cells are rated at 75 amp hours, we're gonna try to do a 1C um, discharge rate for this capacity test so that it's very accurate. So that means that this heat gun needs to pull around 75 amps at 12 volts. There we go. We got 78, 77, 76. That's close enough. So I just realized something. We have a limit on this BMS. This is a 60 amp BMS. So we're going to drop the current a bit. All right, there we go. 56, 59. That will work. That was actually a really cool test for that BMS. It actually handled it. And under this large of a load, the difference between the cells is no more than 12 millivolts. So that's really good. This tells us the difference in internal resistance. If one of them was off by a lot, then that would be a bad sign. Well, now, boy, Joe, look at that. It's supposed to do 960 watt hours, but only did 919. So we are just shy of 75 amp hours. So it's more like 73.8. So I was a little disappointed because most lithium iron phosphate cells, when they're brand new and matched well, like these Sino polys that I always recommend, they'll do like 105% of their rated capacity. No problem, even at the C rate that we tested. But these did not. 
they still did practically 100% capacity. The difference was not statistically significant. It was off by like a 1%. So technically these do work, but I wonder how well they are matched because when they are new, they typically do a little bit better. So I'm, I'm just a little confused by that. And I'm not a big fan of these terminals and these bus bars. And also, how are you supposed to mount these things? With these, you, you can put hose clamps, you can tape, you can use all sorts of stuff. But with this one, it's a little bit more difficult. Like, look how flimsy this pack is with the tape and these bus bars. Like, these bus bars alone can hold the pack. And we have no tape, no nothing. So these bus bars are super strong. So I probably want to build a really large pack with these for, like, a home system or an off-grid cabin. But they're very small and they're more lightweight than these Sino polys. So yeah, this does have some benefits, absolutely. But for solar power, I'd be going with these for sure. But if you want an electric bicycle with a non-combustible battery, these would be perfect. They would last a really long time and it would be so easy to wire up. They're so light, it's crazy. Another benefit is the aluminum casing. They can dissipate heat better than maybe these ones. These don't get as hot, but that's not a good sign because the heat needs to go somewhere in these it is being pushed outward so these might last longer especially if you have slow c rate and you have a lightweight application these would be perfect so yeah it really depends on your application all of my tests are great on the new ones and even the old ones this one has thousands of cycles and i can still get 90 percent capacity like i love Sino poly cells but these are not your only options if you go online you can find winston and kalb cells and a lot of the ev guys started with the kalb cells but a lot of my friends that are EV guys have complained that the quality control is not there if you buy like a hundred of them ten of them will be bad also they like to go out of balance over time um, I don't think they're matched that well um, so I avoid Kalb like the plague Winston I don't know um, you can buy Winston more in Europe there's a distributor that I see but I can't pay the shipping charge it'd be pointless so yeah that's why I'm typically sticking to Sino Poly and I found a really good distributor that matches the cells and that's really, really important. Not only for capacity and performance, but also for longevity. If you want a battery to last a really long time, they need to be matched perfectly. But all of these batteries will last a very long time. I mean, for most applications, people won't even notice it. I'm starting to think more and more about it. After, you know, 5,000 cycles and you have like 80% capacity, you can still use these batteries. These are much more thermally stable than those little batteries that you use in your like laptop or cell phone. And there's a lot of data that you can read on these capacity tests over time. A lot of the marine guys in the forums will post them. Very interesting. And that's why I really like these. All right. So so these batteries at 100 amp hour cells compared to these ones that are matched are the same cost. So you're not losing or saving any money. I think you can buy all of these cells though on AliExpress for pennies. There has been some with this heat shrink wrap on AliExpress for dirt cheap. Literally 100 amp hours is like 420 bucks or something like that. A big difference I just remembered right now is these have a 3C rate and these have a 2C rate. So discharge rate, if you're trying to do large loads, the Sino polys will totally destroy these. But how many people are using these for large loads? So it really depends on what you're doing, as always. And when it comes to batteries, you always have trade-offs. You never win. There's pros and cons, but at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. So this was a fun video. It really got me thinking about these cells. And if you have a different experience, please let me know. I would love to be proven wrong on anything. If you've had a bad experience with these, please let me know. That would be great. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.